Hi. 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 My name's Kristen. Hi, how are you? Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So I wanted to ask you, if, the, if Amazon or another major internet real estate uh, enters the market for wine sales, how do you think that will affect wine sales? Uh, are they talking about that? Amazon is? I do a lot of work for Robert Madonna, uh -huh. and uh, one thing that I, and most of what I do is travel the country and appear at festivals like this, only on their behalf. Um, as we're in different states, we often talk about the ridiculous difficulties they have. Every state has different laws. So for Amazon to try to get into the, the wine or spirits business is going to be really interesting. There are a lot of states where it's illegal to ship wine to, to individual people. California is considering becoming one of those states, which would effectively kill it. But if they don't, what a lot of people think is that everyone else will fall in line and Amazon can then enter the market. So I wonder how that would affect wine sales. Would it promote... Well, it, 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 I think it would inevitably increase wine sales, and it would benefit a lot of wineries. There are, of course, it would uh, quite likely hurt a lot of independent wine retailers, uh, and distributors would go bananas. And distributors are often run by extremely tough, connected, when I say tough and connected, you, mean you know, Jersey style? absolutely, uh, those people will fight to the nail to stop any kind of entry into the market by someone like Amazon. Um, on the other hand, I'm a big fan of, you know, I'm very connected. I'm a big fan of Amazon. I use them for a lot of things. They're an incredible resource. So, I don't know. Uh, anything that makes it easier easier for me to get the wines I want is, is, is primarily positive for the consumer. I don't know. What do you think? I'm worried about it. You know, I'm worried about the search engine effect when you look up a tab from a certain area and you get price points that are $12.99, $12.99, $12.99, and then $9.99, why would you click on the $9.99? That might not be a, a great one. But why is that any different from the same thing that happened in the grocery store? I think it's probably similar, but if you're selling at that kind of national level, you can maybe drive those price points even lower. It's an, that's an interesting idea. I have not heard anything about that. I mean, they do a great job of selling books. Um, they haven't uh, they haven't been much help to Barnes and Noble or Borders. Not at all. Not at all. Um, we'll see what, what they can do about the legalities. That's going to be. I mean, they're 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 ridiculous. The, the, the liquor laws in our country are so stupid that I I, I don't know how they're going to do that. But it'll be interesting. They're pushing for it. We'll see. Uh, so last month we saw the first um, California winery go uh, lead certified. Oh. So a, a, a green production. What do you think the future of sustainability is within wine lines? Well, um, even though there aren't a lot of wines that are labeled organic, most wine, most most vineyards are run under standards that are pretty close. Now, granted. Grapes are finicky, and if you, you know, there's sometimes pests come in, and there's absolutely nothing they can do except something, except something inorganic. But, the, but you can't go too overboard with the chemicals and pesticides when you're talking about a product that delicate. Um, uh, I think it's going to grow as much as it is in, in, in every area of food uh, production and marketing, and I think that's fantastic. Um, I just saw Food Incorporated, which is a really, really important film. I'm a big devotee of Michael Pollan, who writes a lot about sustainable agriculture. I'm a member of the CSA myself, so every Wednesday I take my tub bags and pick up my organic produce. I don't know what it's going to be. It's awesome. It's really, I just joined this summer. It's totally changed the way I cook. Um, because you don't know, you know I, maybe I never would have bought whole Robbie. Uh, I might not have bought as many cherries uh, as I ended up with. I get home and I find, you know, you gotta cook it, you gotta do something with it or it's gonna be a waste. Um, you, you, you only get stuff that is at its absolute peak. And that's the way the Italians in little villages have always lived. And it's a great way to cook. Uh, it's exciting. I'm eating less meat because I have so much great produce to work with. I barely have room for anything else. Do you think, given the cost um, in terms of carbon emissions, in terms of water consumption, that it's necessary to eat less meat? Is that uh, a really important front in the environmental fight against uh, global climate change? Yes. The meat tastes really good, though. Well, 
love food a lot, and I'm not, I don't like to tell people to deprive themselves, so I usually encourage people to uh, really just enjoy, enjoy their lives. Right. I'm not, I, I'm not somebody who's compelled to eat an enormous amount of meat, or to eat it every day. Um, I do think that it's it's one of those products that you kind of make intelligent choices about and try to buy uh, from farms that are close and places where uh, you know the meat industry is, is notorious for mistreating the animals and like, they've had all kinds of E. coli yeah, outbreaks in the last 10 years. It's just gotten worse and worse. Thankfully, the House yesterday passed a food safety bill that I think will help improve conditions in America's meat packing plants, I hope. But as Food Inc. informs me, uh, something like 80% of our meats come from just four companies. That just freaks me out. I don't, I don't, yeah. want, to buy, I don't want to buy that product. So I choose to pay a little more and get it kosher chickens and, and beef if I can. Uh, now, it used to be that I would just buy organic stuff if it was convenient for me. Now I really, really, really try not to buy anything that isn't. But the rub, the mentioned cost, that's going to be the tough part, especially in the recession. People ask me all the time, how, how, how do I go organic when it costs this much? And I'd love to see the subsidies for corn go away and, and, and to get our, our system back in balance. Uh, because I, there, I don't have a good answer for that question. It's, it's more expensive. It's more, it's more expensive in the short term. In the long run, what's really expensive is filling well, the soil if, full of pesticides. If we can eliminate the subsidies for corn, then you might see those price points. Yeah. Let me ask you about beer. With the rise of uh, craft beers and beer becoming, uh, I think, something that Americans are taking more seriously, yes. is that changing the way that people are having drinks at dinner, pairing dinners, those kinds of things? Beer dinners are fantastic. Uh, I agree. You know, uh, it used to be in the United States in the 70s, maybe even in the 80s, that uh, beers from Europe were regarded as the most superior, just as it was in the wine world in the 60s. I think American brewers are making the best beers in the world right now. Um, by far. By far. Uh, I mean, there's, there, are always, there are still, there have always been great beers coming out of Belgium. I'm not a big German beer guy myself. Uh, I like English and Scottish and Irish beer better than German beer. But they have, there's such amazing variety in American craft brewing. And the only thing I don't like about it is that, that so much of it has cheesy names. Some of it's a little overboard. I don't like a lot of like crazy fruits in my beer and stuff like that. But you know, it's a creative bunch. But that kind of started with Corona. You put a lime in the beer. I, I don't remember the guy, but he also well, didn't he also sort of uh, reframe uh, Jaeger as something that college students uh, would take a shot. He then went to Texas and and, and, and put Corona out there as a beer you put a lime in. I really hate it when some bartender sticks a line in my beer without asking. I don't put, I mean, that's just me. No, no, no fruit in your beer? I, I, I'm not a fan. Not a fan. It doesn't work. I want to taste the, I want to taste the hops. I want to taste the, even what, are some, beer. what are some of your favorite uh, American breweries then? Well, I'd love to have a more, um, a, more a cooler, more, um, Tiki answer to that question, but I have a lot of trouble giving up on Sierra Nevada Pale Ale, oh, which is great. which is now everywhere, yeah. uh, and it wasn't always. But it's just for me, just the, the perfect balance of hoppiness and maltiness, and I drink way too much of it. I should probably get a keg and stall my house. I like American Pale Ale; it's my favorite style. Just the right weight, just the right hoppiness. I'm a, to I'm a total beer dude. I brewed for a while. I made about seven types of beer. What, this guy and I have been doing it. What this, styles did you make? Well, I definitely made an American Pale Ale. Um, it's, it's probably been 10 years, so I don't really remember the specifics now, but it was such an eye-opener for me because you really learn, like anything else, you learn what you're tasting. You learn what hops are. Oh, that's what hop, I mean, why would you know before that? Right. Uh, that that's what those, arom what those aromatics are. Um, it, and I did pretty well. I had a party where I, where I served it all. And I also bought a Kevin Miller for the lamos in the crowd that weren't going to like, weren't going to appreciate my work. And nobody <laughs> drank the Miller. Hey, congratulations! My friends are pretty good, pretty cool. Yeah, good, good people. Thank you so much. Really nice to meet you. Thanks for your questions. Thanks a lot.